Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the 12th chapter of microwave engineering, the microwave passive components we have been addressing so far. So up till now in this chapter, we have gone through the understanding of the behaviors of the various components as like the E plenty, H plenty, magic T, hybrid rings, directional couplers and hybrid couplers. The understanding of all these devices most possibly we have done with the help of the scattering matrix derived for them and also we have solved with the selected problems onto these microwave components here. Now let us add one more topic, one more component in this family that is called as microwave gyrator. So let us see the details. So here we start with our topic called as microwave gyrator. See the title of this particular topic is microwave gyrator. So let me make it very clear that as compared to the previous devices, the principle of operation of this particular device is quite different. From the name of this particular microwave component you may not be getting the idea what can be the exact behavior of this particular device so to understand the behavior of this particular device let us first of all discuss on what principle basis it has the behavior so it has the basic of the faraday's rotation faraday's rotation principle And this Faraday's rotation principle is exhibited by a specific material. The specific material is called as the ferrite material. So it is very necessary to understand what this ferrite material is. The ferrite material is basically a non-metallic material. Generally, we have a classification of the material to be either metal or non-metal or semiconductor. So it is based on the three characteristic parameters. The characteristic parameters as like the conductivity denoted by sigma, the permittivity of the material denoted by epsilon, the permeability of the material medium denoted by mu here. So epsilon can be in general epsilon 0 times epsilon r whereas mu can be mu 0 times mu r here. So epsilon 0 and mu 0 are the standard permittivity and permeabilities of the material medium for air or free space. So these have the constant values. Epsilon 0 is equal to 8.854 into 10 raised to power minus 12 measured in terms of Farad's per meter. Whereas mu 0 is 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 measured in terms of Henry's per meter. So these are the relative values of the permittivity and the permeabilities. So when we talk about the non-metallic materials called as the ferrite materials, we have instead of the conductivity sigma described the resistivity that can be denoted by rho here. So the resistivity denoted by rho is as compared to the metals greater than that of the metals by the order of 10 raised to the power 14 times here. Whereas when we talk about the epsilon r, the epsilon r, the relative dielectric constant is of the order of we have 10 to 15 to be the value of epsilon r which can be multiplied to the constant value of epsilon 0 giving the complete permittivity for the ferrite materials to be used for Faraday's rotation principle. Now it's time of the relative permeability of the medium. So the relative permeability of the medium is of the order of 10 raised to the power 3 or in general you can take it to be of the order of 1000 here. So all these features, the characteristics are exhibited by the materials. For example, we have MnO, we have ZnO, we have 
CDO, we have NIO or a mixture of these four here. So these are called as the ferrite materials. So I hope the ferrite materials are very clear to you. Now let us have a focus on what exactly the Faraday's rotation principle tells us. So to understand the Faraday's rotation principle for the ferrite material, we have a simple schematic diagram. So in this schematic diagram, this circular rod that has been shown, this is nothing but the ferrite material. So the ferrite material just discussed is shown like this. So one end of the ferrite material can be regarded as the port number one, whereas the another end is called as the port number two. So these two ports are separated by the distance small n that can be also regarded as length of the ferrite material or the ferrite rod in general we can say. So this ferrite material or ferrite rod is subject to the magnetic field. So for magnetic field we generally have the two vectors representing its strength by magnetic field intensity h bar here whereas the magnetic flux density is represented by capital B it is also the vector here. So usually the capital B bar is used for the representation to show there it is the existence of magnetic flux lines into the circulating nature there. Now to discuss the Faraday's rotation principle for the ferrite material as shown in the earlier schematic diagram, let us consider that the magnetic field is designated by B sub 0 and it is oriented towards the positive Z direction. Now as we have H bar and B bar to represent the magnetic field components, we have E bar and D bar to represent the existence of the electric field. So E bar is electric field intensity. So most possibly while having the propagation of the microwave signal, the E bar vector and H bar vector are mutually perpendicular to each other as well as are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the microwave signal. So that type of propagation is called as transverse electromagnetic mode of wave propagation here. So in this diagram, a positive Z is the direction of propagation of the signal. So that time E vector can be aligned towards the X axis, whereas the for H vector there it is chance to have for the Y axis orientation here. So for determination of the type of polarization, we take only the orientation of the E field here. So the polarization, I hope you can take the background from electromagnetic field theory subject where we can have the linearly polarized wave, we can also have the circularly polarized wave. So it depends on the tip of the E vector. So while having the propagation, if the orientation of the E vector is completely with only one direction, so that time it will be tracing a line as it proceeds forwards towards the direction of propagation here. So we consider first of all that it has the linear polarization. Now if this magnetic field is applied to the ferrite rod as shown in the earlier schematic diagram, because of the magnetic field and the ferrite material, the microwave signal that is having the propagation inside the ferrite rod will have tilt or the rotation of the E field vector here. So earlier E0 which can be resolved into the two components E0 by 2, E0 by 2, which are having 90 degree of difference in the angle here. So in general E0. So after having certain Z amount of distance covered, it will be having a rotation. The angle of rotation is denoted by theta 1 here. As the propagation carries forward through the ferrite material again, we have the rotation or the inclination of the vector again with another angle that theta 2 can be greater than theta 1. So this is nothing but the Faraday's rotation principle into the ferrite materials here. So because of this observation, so if we fade the input of microwave signal to port number 1, while it is obtained from port number 2, 
there it is the rotation and the rotation can be shown by this particular arrow in this schematic diagram now let us come to our exact topic that is called as microwave gyrator so let me make it clear to you people microwave gyrator is a two port device in the family of microwave components up till now as we have gone through e plenty is a three port device h plenty is a three port device magic t or hybrid t is a four port device directional coupler hybrid rings these are also four port devices here the hybrid couplers are also four port devices the gyrator and the next two devices that are based on the principle of faraday's rotation into the ferrite material are two port devices in general so here we have the simple block diagram to show you so let us say this is the device and this can be regarded as port number one and on to the another end we have port number two here the basic behavior of the gyrator microwave component which has the use of ferrite material and the principle of faraday's rotation is that when we have microwave signal fed to input number one that is port one so it will apply a phase change of pi radians while it goes from port one to port number two whereas if the same microwave signal is spread now this time by port number two there it will be no phase shift or zero degrees of phase shift here as it proceeds from port number two to port number one here so let us see the details of how exactly the microwave gyrator works with the help of one more detailed schematic diagram so this is the schematic diagram for microwave gyrator see this is the microwave gyrator device shown to you people so the microwave gyrator at the center position is basically a circular waveguide structure here so circular waveguide structure waveguide we define it is a hollow metallic tube so a metal tube that is having the circular cross section that is called as the circular waveguide so at the center position it is of circular cross section whereas at the two openings it has a rectangular cross section so from first opening and from the second opening there it is a transition from the circular to that of the rectangular cross sections here so at the exact opening we can have the rectangular cross section and in between there it is circular cross section now at the center of the device there it is kept a ferrite material that we have discussed here so this is designated by the name ferrite rod here the ferrite rod is tapering at both the ends so it is just like the pencil ends it is just to reduce the amount of attenuation now as the ferrite rod if it is having the magnetic field associated with it will be exhibiting the faraday's rotation principle here the another cross sectional view is shown here so this is the exact ferrite material which is covered by the polyform here so this is subject to the existence of the two permanent magnets shown as capital n for the north pole and capital s for the south pole here so this is the representation of the permanent magnet associated with this gyrator device here now as we can see a simple transition from the circular to that of the rectangular cross section at port number two at port number one there it is one more thing that we have a twist here the twist is by 90 degrees here so this is 90 degrees twist here now when we talk about the rectangular waveguide here the most popular mode of propagation is nothing but the dominant mode of propagation so for dominant mode of propagation we get the lowest possible value of the cutoff frequency or in another words the highest possible value of the cutoff wavelength here so for the rectangular waveguide the dominant mode is nothing but 
ट्रांसवर्स इलेक्ट्रिक टी ई वन जीरो वेर एज वेन वी हैव दिस सर्क्युलर वेव गाइड टू बी ऑपरेटेड टू ऑप्टेन द लोएस्ट पॉसिबल कट ऑफ फ्रिक्वेंसी और हाइएस्ट पॉसिबल कट ऑफ वेव लेंथ वी हैव द डॉमिनेंट मोड डेसिग्नेटेड बाय ट्रांसफर्स इलेक्ट्रिक दैट इट इज टी ई वन वन हियर सो नाउ इफ वी हैव द सिग्नल फेड एज इनपुट टू पोर्ट नंबर वन हियर वी सी दिस इज द टी ई वन वन मोड द ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ the e field vectors can be like this in the upward direction here so initially when it has to have transition from rectangular cross section to the circular cross section it has to encounter this 90 degree of twist here so if this is the earlier orientation of the e field vector it will be having this twist cross and it will be rotated by 90 degree here so if it is having the वर्टिकल ओरिएंटेशन इट विल बी एट द हॉरिजॉन्टल ओरिएंटेशन ड्यू टू द 90 डिग्री ऑफ रोटेशन हियर वी कैन से ड्यू टू द शिफ्ट हियर नाउ इट हैज एंटर टू द सर्कुलर क्रॉस सेक्शन इन द सर्कुलर क्रॉस सेक्शन एट द सेंटर देयर इट इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ फेराइट मटेरियल एंड ड्यू टू द फेराइट मटेरियल एंड एग्जिस्टिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एट द कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू it has to again have the rotation of e field vector so that it was horizontally it will be again vertically but now towards the downwards here so the field vector that it was having vertical orientation towards upper end now has again the vertical orientation towards the downward end so it is a complete phase shift by 180 degrees while we have propagation of microwave signal from port 1 to port number 2 here now if on to the another hand we have provided the input here that it means to port number 2 here so at port number 2 if we have the vertical orientation of the e field vector as it enters from rectangular cross section to the circular cross section it has to go through the ferrite material the ferrite material will be introducing the rotation to the e field vector only in one direction so from whatever the end either from port 1 or port 2 the microwave signal is fed to it so you can see in the earlier case here it was in vertical orientation and the rotation was towards the left hand side here so here also though it is having vertical orientation and input from port number 2 it will be having the rotation into the left hand side only so here it is the rotation because of the ferrite material and it has been coming at this particular position of 90 degree twist here the 90 degree twist now it will have the rotation to the horizontal type of the vector on to the left hand side back to the vertical orientation towards the upper direction here so now whatever the field orientation that it was fed to the port number 2 it has been restored at the port number one obtained here so therefore the behavior of the microwave gyrator is as such if we feed input to port number 1 and obtain output at port number 2 there it is a complete phase shift by 180 degrees or pi radians on the another hand if we have input to port number 2 and obtain output at port number 1 there it is no phase change here zero degree of phase shift we can say here so this was all about the microwave gyrator device so by the next lecture we shall continue with the same chapter microwave components and based on to the faraday's rotation principle we shall be addressing the another microwave component called as microwave circulator here so i hope you enjoy learning the microwave engineering subject and its concepts so for more such knowledge you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you